So today we're doing college football player props here on Prize Picks for Friday, October 7th. Before I get started, there's a link in the description below to sign up for Prize Picks, or you can use promo code TUFF to sign up. Price picks will match 100% of your first deposit. There's also a free Discord link in the description below of this video where we're building a pretty strong community there, as well as Patreon link where I give all my plays that I'm making here on price picks for each sport that I do play, MLB, NBA, NFL, college football, multiple posts on Patreon every single day. So go ahead and check out that link in the description below. But let's get into it again. I do want to mention as well, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not gambling advice. These are simply just the plays I'm personally looking at making here on price picks. Hopefully giving you guys some insight and analysis to help you guys make your own player props. But like I said, four total games here for Friday, October 7th on Price Picks. And there's not a lot of other uh, sporting events inside. Obviously, MLB playoffs start tomorrow, Friday. Uh, I guess I'm gonna have, this video will be going out Thursday, October 6th. So Friday, we have MLB playoffs, which are going to be getting. And then obviously, no NFL. College football should be uh, prime time on you know Friday night. So I definitely think a lot of money is going to be going into these plays um, in the books overall. But Nebraska versus Rutgers with the over-under at 50.5. Uh, Houston versus Memphis, the highest over-under of this four-game slate at 57.5. Colorado versus Nevada, uh, over-under at 44. And then UNLV versus San Jose State at 52. All right, but let's get into it. There's two total player props here in this video that I do like. Um, Patreon for this slate, I'm probably going to give around six total plays, maybe seven. Um, but let's get into it. Two plays that I do like. Let's go. So the first one is going to be a play that we took last Sunday. And I'm just going to continue to play it. I like Trey Palmer here over six and a half receptions. He has hit this in his last two games, three of his last five, 10 receptions and eight receptions against Oklahoma and Indiana. Um, I think the Indiana game, you know, Nebraska came out and played extremely well in that game. And they beat Indiana 35 to 21. Indiana didn't have Cam Camper, their number one wide receiver, so on and so forth. But Trey Palmer is the wide receiver one in his offense. He recently was added to the Belinikoff uh, Award watch list. And you, I mean, you take a look at the Nebraska Cornhuskers, you take a look at their team stats, and you know, take, sort of just by reception, this Trey Palmer is just dominating the catches here in this offense. 36 receptions this season, 480 yards of total receiving yards. And I mean, the next wide receiver has 14 receptions. So Trey Palmer definitely dominating this, um, even dating back to last season. And they believe he transferred um, from LSU. LSU transfer here. So um, even dating back to last season, all right, he had a couple games, I believe, with LSU over uh, six and a half receptions. But this season, as the wide receiver one um, in this offense with Casey Thompson, he's definitely starting to really understand that this is his guy. This is his go-to wide receiver here um, at six and a half. I like it a little bit more than fantasy score, and I like it a little bit more than receiving yards. Um, so I'm taking this one, Trey Palmer over six and a half receptions. This is kind of more just a gut feeling play. Um, just the way, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, ESPN doesn't show targets, but in, pre, in this game, he had like 14 targets. I was following the game and, it, you know, he was getting these catches, but it was almost like every other play was Casey Thompson looking to throw the ball to Trey Palmer. It would be incomplete to Trey Palmer or, you know, deep miss to Trey Palmer. So he is the wide receiver one in this offense. He's looking to assert himself as an elite wide receiver across the country, I believe. Um, you know, and what not a better way to do it on a Friday night game against Rutgers. So I'm taking the over here, six and a half Trey Palmer receptions against Rutgers. And then the other prop is going to be a fantasy score prop here. And we are going to go with Aiden Robbins over 17 and a half. Now, Aiden Robbins has actually hit the over on this one four of his last five games. His only miss here was against UTS. Where he had 15.3, but 23, 18.2, 41.6, and then 19 fantasy points against New Mexico last week. But Eddie Robbins is the solidified. Like when I say solidified, there's no committee about this backfield here at UNLV. And I mean, you look at the carries, right? He started, he's a transfer, by the way. If you take a look at this, top FBS, trans, FBS transfer rushing yards leaders, Aiden Robinson is leading all transfers in rushing yards, right? And Xavier on holidays having a great year. So is the quarterback from Kansas State, uh, Adrian Martinez, 469. But Adrian, Aiden Robbins is dominating um, that backfield for UNLV. If we could take a quick look at this. And I mean, this is what you kind of want to look for because we've seen a lot of volatility kind of in the touches with a lot of running backs um, in college football lately as far as just like the volatility of them being on the field. But Aiden Robbins, I mean... The next highest rusher is Doug Rumfield, the quarterback. And then behind that is Courtney Reese at 24 carries. So almost 100 more carries here for Aiden Robbins through five games. 
104 rushing yards, 104 attempts, 506 rushing yards, eight total touchdowns in five games. It's pretty impressive here, in my opinion, um, for Ada Robbins so far. And he's getting a little bit of work out the backfield, nothing too crazy. Three receptions, two receptions, which, again, this fantasy scoring on price picks is PPR. So this does help. But I like this play here for Aiden Robbins against San Jose State, who um, are having definitely some trouble against the run. So, like, for example, San Jose rush yards allowed compared to UNLV. UNLV gives up 108 yards rush yards on the ground per game, and San Jose State's giving up 152 San Jose State doesn't really allow the pass as much. You can see here only 152, 54 yards passing allowed. And, uh, you know, UNLV definitely gives up the pass, right? So I think UNLV might struggle a little bit to pass the ball in San Jose State and, you know, opt to run the ball a little bit more. You can see here, I mean, they literally allow the same, um, almost the same amount of rush yards as they do pass yards, um, you know, against when they play teams. So I think uh, UNLV here in a position where, they may not be able to move the ball. They probably, the coaching staff probably well aware of that. Why not feed Aiden Robbins in this game? If he can, you know, if they can get to the red zone, um, I think they definitely feed him there. One, maybe two touchdowns would really, really put this over the top here. So I'm taking Aiden Robbins over 17 and a half fantasy score in this game for uh, UNLV over U versus San Jose State. So the two player props here for this video, college football. Friday slate is going to be Trey Palmer over 6.5 receptions and Aiden Robbins over 17 and a half fantasy points. Again, let me know in the comments below you guys feel about these props. A little bit more volatility. I guess not more volatility, but not, obviously not as many games here for Friday college football slate. So keep that in mind to kind of play lighter. Um, obviously, you want to save your funds for Saturday college football slate, which have just been super fun in my opinion all season long so far. Again, drop a like on this video. Hit the subscribe button. And as always, let's catch.